Good evening, everybody, and how are we all doing today? It is Sunday, the 11th of July, 2021, and we are still going live, despite what is happening. Um, apparently, there's some football or something going on, some sporting event going on this evening, but um, I'm not really into football, in all honesty, so uh, we won't worry about that. Uh, instead, what we're going to talk about today is if you've got any seed-saving tips. This came in from a, a viewer. Um, and if you want to call in, the phone lines are, of course, open. Uh, but let's see if we've got anybody out there. And I'm pretty sure we do have people out there. So starting, we've got uh, Philly SPB. Hello to you. Um, hello to the Veg Grower Army, he's uh, saying. We'll bring that up. Um, Bally Cillian has joined. Hello to you. And uh, uh, who else have we got? We've got Oracle, who uh, was winding me up just before we went live. Uh, uh, you got me there. You got me there. I can say that. Uh, who else have we got? Ian Beddoes has joined. Good evening to you. Um, where are you? Good evening to you. And Turbo Stream has joined. Good evening to you too. Uh, anybody else? Stuart Jackson, hello to you. Hope you are well. Evening to the Veg Army, he is saying. I've actually been thinking we're going to get some T-shirts made up with Veg Grower Army or Veg Grower Crew on uh, printed on them as a, a little idea I had during the week. Uh, who else have we got? Hargrave Gas, evening, so much to do, trying to get the Wi-Fi to stretch so I can listen while posting things on. Uh, well, I think that's putting things on. Yeah, that's, I've had to extend my Wi-Fi with various repeaters and things in order to reach it out here and uh we've got beatrice hello to you hope you are well and lovely to see you so as always i like to start off with what i've been up to over these last well over this last week but mostly at the moment seems like at the weekend i've been very very busy work at the moment is just going crazy and during the week, I'm not getting as much done as I would like, so I have to save it all for the weekend. Uh, I've been at home, I've been potting on some of my plants and getting rid of some of the old pots. I'm trying to keep constant flow of vegetables coming in, and uh, that means sowing on more seeds, got more cabbages in the pipeline, and that, of course, needs potting up, more thyme, more basil. Um, today, I've sown the... Um, Perilia, which went out with the Seed Supporters Club, which is a slightly different one, but uh, I don't know how it's going to go. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I've been doing at home. Down on the allotment, been doing a lot of weeding, basically. Um, there's not much more I can do down there at the moment. Weeding and planting plants out. The, the rain is actually taking care of a lot of the watering for me at the moment. So I'm not having to worry so much about that. Um, just had an alert telling me I've gone live on YouTube. Uh, so yeah, yeah, that's what I've been up to. What about yourselves? What have you been doing? So, uh, let's have a look. Adrian has joined. Hello to you. Hope you are well. Um, already tips are coming in for the seed collecting. Can we, can we save that until just a little bit? Let's find out what everyone's been up to over this last week. Uh, before we get into the seed saving tips. Uh, Amanda Joy, hi everyone, sorry to say I'll be missing the show as we're not at home this evening. I look forward to watching back tomorrow and wishing you all a lovely evening. Well, I hope you're having a good weekend away and um, uh, have a good time. Uh, thank you very much for participating anyway uh turbo stream can we have mugs with veg grower army and i can then drink tea on the plot out of them yeah yeah i'm sure i can do mugs as well well i know i can do i mean i've got these mugs already done so i can easily um get something with veg grower army done i'm gonna have to have a word with my artist friend um and find out a few ideas i've got my own but i'll I've worried of him. Uh, Amanda, hoping we all have lots to celebrate later. Why? What's happening later? I've not not actually heard anything. I did 
did get a weird phone call from the uh, Wembley um, Wembley Gardening Club, who tell me they're missing some of their ornaments. So uh, they seem to think they've somehow escaped into this shed. So if anybody can see anything that looks like it might belong at Wembley, then let me know. Uh, Turbo Stream has mainly been mulching on the plot. What have you been using for your mulch? Compost, bark chips, grass clippings? Let us know. I should say, you can, of course, phone in on the phone number 07307 135 174, or you can zap yourself in uh, in the link which is going up in the comments right now. Uh, if you're watching in the Facebook group, you may not see the link, but if you're watching in the Facebook page, you will see it. Uh, Stuart Jackson, I have been planting leeks in an old fish box. I've got a picture of that coming up a little bit later on. Uh, a bit close together, but they will be fine. Yeah, I did that with my excess leeks last year. It worked absolutely fine. Um Ian Beddoes has planted 48 peas in the raised bed and managed to eat some as no grandchildren this week. Fantastic. I saw I saw a picture on uh, your Facebook that you were very pleased with the veg that you've grown, actually, Ian. And really great to see as well. Um, Helen Depp. I hope I've pronounced that right. Topping and tailing gooseberries, recipes, anyone? Oh, that's a good one. Get showing your gooseberry re recipes. My my thing that I like to do is gooseberry jam, but I have made gooseberry wine before, but I'm not much of an alcohol drinker, so definitely gooseberry jam. Top and tail uh, and about weigh the amount of gooseberries with the amount of – well, you need to boil the gooseberries first, but weigh – the amount of the gooseberries before you boil them, put them in a pan, boil them till they go soft, and then add the same amount of sugar, boil them up until you get a really hard boil, and off you go. Um, mainly harvesting, Bally Selena has been doing, and the wife jam been making various jams and pickling. Well, this is, sounds like something that uh, is going to be in discussion tonight and something I'm going to be discussing on tomorrow's podcast. Um, I love jam making. I love pickle making. Just don't get the time to make as much as I would like anymore. Uh, Beatrice received my member seeds and have sown them all today. Fantastic. Um, I, um, I, I think I saw a picture that you had sent them or uh, you left a comment on the website, didn't you? And fantastic. I'm Pleased that you've got them and pleased you're happy with them. Um, Stuart Jackson has spotted when it comes up. Come on. Come on. What's going on here? There we go. Spotted the little man to your right. What? That one there. That one there, I take it. I think there might be a few more hidden all over the place. Uh, grass clippings around the part. Turbo stream has been putting grass clippings around the parsnips and part composted leaves on other parts of the plot. Yeah, I've been using grass clippings more and more when my lawnmower is working, and I found that to be really good mulch that I can easily just get hold of um, all the time especially cooch grass, it just seems to grow like mad. Um, Stuart Jackson, Richard, you made gooseberry full a few weeks ago. No, that was, was it rhubarb full I made? I think it was rhubarb full, uh, not gooseberries, because gooseberries have only just came into season, but there's quite a few out there um, for us to eat. And yeah, I've got lots of gooseberry plants. Very something I tend to do with gooseberries is I found it's very easy to propagate more gooseberry plants from the cuttings in order to try and get more plants. And I know I've got two out there that I took from cuttings. And well, and actually I didn't do cuttings. I if what I did is I threaded a a branch through the bottom of a pot, filled that pot up with compost, and used the layering method in order to um, propagate that while still uh, 
attached to the mother plant. Works very, very well. And in some ways, layering is uh, a lot better, I feel, uh, than trying to take cuttings because it's still attached to the mother plant. Uh, are we still going live? There was a sudden hiccup for some reason and the comments have stopped. So uh, I don't know if I can see any comments. Uh, just, ah, uh, yes, here we go. Here we go. I found two above your head. Yeah, there's two more above my head. Um, one, two, just there. Uh, that's three that's found. There's one more left. Um, I found two above your head. I put grass clippings over the top of my potatoes just so I remember where they are as I cut all the leaves off. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, grass clippings are great on potatoes. I've been doing that more and more this year. And what I'm already finding is that the potatoes that I'm digging up are looking fantastic. Oh, Bill and Val's alumnus has joined. Hello. Hope you are well. Uh, haven't seen you this weekend. I was down the allotment yesterday, um, but I walked down. That might be why you didn't see me. I decided to walk down because I didn't want to take too much stuff. Um, I can't say I saw you when I was there either, uh, weirdly. Um, yeah. Uh, Helen is saying gooseberry fall sounds great. Love a fall. Yeah, I, I do enjoy a nice gooseberry fall or rhubarb fall as well. Uh, and what else? Turbo stream. We have a regular delivery of glass grass clippings, so I decided to make use of them. Added a load of leaves and grass clippings in layers in the compost bay. Yeah, um, I've just found that I'm mowing the lawn and the areas around my allotment, which is just full of grass quite regularly. Um, and I, I just found that that's. I've mulched my potatoes with it. I've mulched quite a few of my beds. It did, we've reduced the weeds quite well. This, my lawnmower is unfortunately packed up since, so I'm having to hold off on doing it at the moment. But, excuse me. Um, yeah, the grass clippings, have, uh, since I've discovered it, I think that's a real good use of a mulch. And it, the potatoes, like I said, the potatoes are really growing really well. Underneath that, the soil, the soil is staying moist uh, and so on. Uh, Beatrice, the plot I have moved to has gooseberries, but the gooseberries are tiny. Not sure if it's a variety of just a poor year. Um, I'm trying to think. I know the ones I've got out there, the gooseberries are quite small on them, but the ones on the allotment aren't. aren't as big as normal actually so now you mention it but I've, I've not really noticed anything um yeah it might be it might be a bad year but it could also be the variety i'm trying to think i would have thought this year the the, the amount of rain we've had the gooseberries would have been really good uh we were there mid-afternoon until uh, I think I had left by about midday I went down in the morning so that's probably why I didn't see you there um uh, and Bill and Val is also asking if they've uh, they've put a new fence past you yeah yeah they put the fence up ages ago uh right down to I should explain to everybody Bill and Bill and Val and myself were all on the same allotment and they've been doing some building works down the side of our allotment uh putting in a new road and a bridge and for me they've put a new fence going down that side um, with a little gate down the far end which goes basically underneath the bridge where they're going to be putting in some new allotments so yeah the fence is definitely down there and uh, doing quite well um, I hope it just went funny again I can't figure out why it keeps doing that oh I can see why signal there we go uh, Stuart Jackson, can I cut a small marrow and cook like a courgette? Thanks, T. Yeah, you can do that. I mean, some people say that a marrow is just a giant courgette, and I have to agree in some ways. Or you let your courgettes go big and they become marrows. I prefer courgettes over marrows, though. Marrows, I just find a bit, uh, what's the point? I 
find them a bit boring, personally. Uh, but but some people like them. Uh, I, I prefer courgette. I aim, uh, Tammy Stream saying, I aim to mulch each section as I harvest things. Yeah. Just, I've mulched, or I'm trying to mulch everything. It just works so well. Um, uh, Bill and Rose, thank you for letting us know. Yeah, no problem. Um, it's interesting now what's going on. Um, right. So, first of all, I've got a video which we uh, got sent in, and this is in two parts. So, I've got the first part of the video coming up, first of all, and this is from Amanda Joy's allotment. So, let's take a tour of our allotment. Hi, everyone. I'm in Leeds um, at my plot, and actually, a really lovely sunny day. I think I've picked a great day to come down. Wait, I'll just say hello. Um, so my plot is uh, like a 15 minute drive out of um, sort of Leeds city centre in Osmondthorpe. Um, I'm just trying to work out where to start. I'm going to start here because this is the, the messy bit. We'll get that out of the way first. Um, here I've just got my compost area um, and, and I call this my crap bin because everything that hasn't got a place or could cause havoc um, just generally gets thrown in here with the intention of sorting it out. Um, one day but yeah we we haven't got there yet nearly a year and a half later um i got my plot last the end of last march so i think it was the 30th of march 2020 um compost bin um is your compost bin really a compost bin if it's not growing potatoes i don't think so <laughs> i was lucky enough when i got my plot that i've got a few trees so i've got an apple tree here which i'm gonna be thinning out but my plot neighbors have suggested just to leave it just a little bit longer before i do so and i also had a lovely cherry tree as well um so we go around the corner i've got my shed um a grapevine that i bought from home um, just ready to put in the new plot um, got some lovely coloured corn that me and my neighbour whose plot is sort of the other side we're sharing that together but she has been doing most of the hard work with that <laughs> here's my polytunnel um, in my polytunnel I'm mostly growing cucumbers um, tomatoes um, peppers chilies and and i've got some basil on the floor and i've actually just sown some basil as well from richard's um member pack because i just love the smell of basil as you walk in um you might have seen me say before that cucumbers are my favorite because i have them with my gin so it looks like i'm going to be having quite a, a boozy weekend this weekend doesn't it <laughs> and also if you've got any suggestions of anything quite exciting to go in the polytunnel I've got a melon at the end there and I've got a luffer and aubergine too but I, I'd love just something a bit weird and wonderful at the end so any suggestions please throw them my way um see the temperature 32 not too bad when I got here one of my plot neighbours had actually opened the door for me I think it would have been near a 40 if not um I've got sort of four beds um, and I'm just trying to make as much of the space as I can. So like I've got my sunflowers dotted down the side of the poly. I've done a fruit and veg and flower growing competition this year. And um, one of the um, sort of categories is sunflowers. But mine, as you can see, certainly not as big. I don't know if you can see Brian's in the distance there. So I'm not one to sabotage. So I might have to take a definitely a runner-up position <laughs> with that one um, in this bed here I've got normal corn um, I've got a couple of pumpkins Atlantic giant baby boo because I've never grown a white one before um, a couple of squash I've got my asparagus that has just decided to grow back from last year so we'll just go with that um, strawberries now I don't normally get any of my strawberries actually because my plot neighbor has a two-year-old son that comes in and gets them before I do but I can see a couple in there today and he's not here so I might manage a couple myself but they are a little bit sour I have to say <laughs> this year just dip them in a bit of sugar though and they'll be fine Oops, sorry I forgot where it uh, cut out there and we'll follow that up with part two a little bit later on I can see already turbo stream is saying that looks like a nice tidy plot it does look like a nice tidy plot doesn't it and I was also impressed with those cucumbers which look really tasty really really tasty uh, during that, I saw Brian joined from Allotment Live. Hello to you. I hope you are very well. 
Um, and Turbo Stream also left a message for Stuart, who said he found that Murrow's roast nice in the oven and they store well. I just, Murrow's for me were just, they just tasted of water, in all honesty. Um, and I couldn't get past that. And I ended up, I mean, because it's only me and my wife, one Murrow, we uh, were feeding ourselves for weeks on it and just got a little bit bored of it. So, uh, yeah, I wasn't impressed. With, I, I'm not impressed with Marrows. I know my granddad used to grow them all the time. He, he used to swear by them. But obviously, when he had his kids, there was seven mouths to feed in that household, plus all the countless dogs and cats he had. So perhaps that was something to uh, think about why he grew Marrows. Personally, I prefer courgettes. Uh, Turbo Stream is saying, I gave most of my gooseberries to my mate whose plot I took over. Sadly, he has cancer, so it's only fair he can enjoy them while he can. That's really good of you. Really good of you for doing that. And you're right. Um, if you're not going to eat the gooseberries, you might as well put them to use of somebody who can use them and enjoy them while he can. Uh, so Ian Beddoes is saying everything looks so much more advanced than mine. Maybe see a bit sooner next year. Maybe so a bit sooner next year. You know what? I'm going to say that probably looks a bit more advanced than mine at the moment. It's just swings and roundabouts, and I, I wouldn't get any worries about that. Now, the main subject that I wanted to discuss this evening was about uh, saving seed tips. And this actually came in from Amanda last week. She was looking for ideas or or she's looking to save seeds a bit more often from her homegrown produce. And would like a few tips from everyone out there who has done it themselves. Now, personally, I have sown some, uh, I have saved some seeds. It's a bit of a mouthful this evening. I have saved some seeds from uh, various um, plants over the years, and I've they're, they're successful. Uh, just I've I I tend to get far too many seeds anyway. I get a lot free with magazines and stuff that I've never been too worried about saving the seeds. But I have given it a lot of thought about doing it more in the past, and. The more I more I think about it, the more it seems to make sense to save seeds, especially trying to be self-sufficient and, and everything. So the best place I found or the best advice I got when it came to saving seeds was from a seed swap that I attend in Brighton in February. Had been able to go this year, obviously, but last year, that was the only event I went to last year. And there's a guy there who knows a lot about saving seeds. He was on the podcast and shared his tips. And what he basically said, and we'll see if everyone else agrees with this, if you're saving seeds from um, anything, really, you want to leave them till they go really ripe. So uh, tomatoes, leave them to go ripe. And tomatoes, not a good example. Chilies, leave them to go really ripe and then take the seeds out. Uh, calendula, leave the flowers on, do not deadhead them, but leave them to go ripe and dry and take the seeds off. Broad beans, which I have done it before quite successfully, uh, I've left those till the shells go really brown and crisp, and then I'll save the seeds from that. So that's my tip out there. And uh, anybody else wants to get in with their tips and start Pulling it up in the, com in the uh, comments now, or call in on 07307 135174. Or you can zap yourself in on the comments going on, or in the link going up in the comments right now and appear on the screen. So, a lot of people talking about the tips for marrows. Uh, it's, what did I see? Helen Depp, cut marrows into thick slices, remove seeds. Fill the holes with chili or bolognese, sprinkle with cheese, bake in a hot oven. You know what? That is actually sounding really, really nice. Oh, we have a caller. Hello, caller. What's your name and where you're calling from? It's the Oregon. Hello there. How are you? I got the earlier letter, didn't I? Yes, you got me earlier. You did. You did. <laughs> yes, you got me worried because I never block anyone. And uh, I. 
I, I did worry that something had happened there. <laughs> yeah, it didn't recognize you without your designer stubble. Sorry. Oh, yeah, I had a bit of a shave. Uh, before we move on, I just want to wish you all good looking, eh, Richard? Oh, we've the football. Yes, we yes. all have the same national anthem here in Northern Ireland, the same as yourself. Good, see if the Queen will under the one bonner. Yes, yes, it's going to be interesting what happens tonight. Uh, good luck anyway, I hope it comes home for you. Yeah, we should say, I'm, I'm not a football fan personally, but um, I'm all for everyone being happy about it, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> well, just on the, the seed saving tips, see, yeah. I tell you the truth, Richard, well, I've never ever tried to save the seeds because you always bought them that cheap, you know. Mm -hmm. You always just say to yourself, well, just, just buy them, just in case you change your mind and so on and all. Mm -hmm. But see, this year, we'll have to really start considering to save the, the seeds here in Northern Ireland for the simple fact that we can't get them, really. That's funny enough what I was thinking when you uh, called in because, yeah, there's been trouble in Northern Ireland with getting vegetable or plant seeds coming in this year due to Brexit. And that's uh, probably... Uh, and potatoes, not just the seeds, the potatoes as well. There's been big issues with as well. Potatoes as well. Wow. Uh, and for me, that just shows how delicate the system is if you're relying on buying your seeds each year. Oh, well, that's, that's your thing. A lot of people in Northern Ireland have to start thinking about the save, mm. the seeds. It's the first year I'd say a lot of people, uh, a lot of people would just say, I don't know if you can name the groups that you can buy them off, like, because I know you're, you're on your e podcast, but you know yourself, you're going to the website and you're getting out there cheaply. Yeah. You say to yourself, at any point, you know. They are, yeah, I mean, they are very, very cheap. Obviously, yes, I, I send six packets out with my um, podcast uh, supporters club. Um, but even that, it, like sending them to Northern Ireland, it's very restrictive on what I, where I can send those, which is why I've limited it. You're dropping a hint, Richard, not to join it? Sorry? You're dropping a hint, not to join it, in case it causes any problems? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does cause problems. Um, so have you have you ever saved seed before? No, that's insane. I never, ever, ever thought about it or anything like that. You just, the, the seeds were always that. They're cheap to buy. There was never any point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are, you, you are know? right. You are right. Um, that being said, I save garlic seed each year, and that quite works out quite well. Uh, that's one of the ones as well. But you do yourself. You say to yourself, you know, I don't know why I'm going to grow that or I'm going to do this. And then you sit in your allotment and you say to yourself, you know what, I'm going to grow all this. You like to eat this and send away your seeds too as well, don't you? You know, yeah. your your plants change week to week, right up to it starts to the sowing season, and not. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you end up with boxes. I'm and sure boxes a lot of people are seeing, you know. Yeah, I'm sure there is. Let's um, see what everybody says about that. Um, I, uh, Turbo Stream saying, I was told if you save seed, then the plants are better in that they will adjust to local conditions in future years. Uh, I'm actually looking forward to your show now to see how people are saving the seeds and what way to save them. Yeah, just a trap this year. Yeah, I'm actually looking forward to this one. It's going to be an interesting one, especially anyone as I say lives in Northern Ireland that would obviously benefit them more now. Just card saving, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is a good reason to uh, listen this evening and find out. Yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. Over and out from the Oracle now. God yeah. bless, son. You take care, and lovely to hear from you again. Yeah, God bless. Take God care. Bless, son. Bye. 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 There we go. That was Oracle from Northern Ireland. Nat. Phone call just goes to prove why we think that, um, or why seed saving is a bit more important. Let me pull that back on. Uh, why seed saving is a bit more important than we first thought. You know, I think even a lot of our seeds here in England tend to come from um, Eastern Europe, Europe, as they've got a space in which they can produce the seeds. There are a few UK based companies, but most come in from uh, abroad. Uh, so, let's quit. Oh, we were talking about that marrows. Uh, that did taste, did sound really nice, actually. I do a similar thing with courgettes where I uh, cut a courgette in half, scoop out the seeds. I fill it with like a cheese and bechamel sauce, put the two halves back together, wrap it in bacon, roast that on the barbecue. It's delicious. Uh so Turbo Stream, I save broad beans when the eyes turn brown. They are ready to dry out and save. Yeah, broad beans is one that I've saved many, many times before, very, very successfully. And I just leave the pods on the plant 
to go brown. Now, when I when I was at uh, Seedy Sunday, as they as it's called, this seed swap place that goes on in Brighton, they actually recommend that you have if you're growing plants to save seeds on your allotment, that you move them away from your other plants so you don't get cross pollination. You try and isolate them somehow. That's not that easy to do in the real world. But I le just left one or two uh, broad bean plants just to go to seed so I could save the seeds and use them the following year. I didn't do it this year, actually, but I, I will do that again. Turbo stream. I also save parsnips. Again, let the seeds start to let the seeds start to go brown and save in a paper bag. So parsnips are a biannual, so they will grow in the first year and then in the second year will pot up their flower head. But if you leave that to that flower head to go to seed, basically don't deadhead it, leave it to go dry and then store those seeds in a paper bag. There you go, you've got parsnip seeds for the following year. Somebody that I used to follow quite a bit, uh, he used to recommend that carrots and parsnips, grow them in a tub, but just leave a few to go to seed and then throw their seeds in that tub again so you can use them that following year. That's another idea, not one that I've tried myself. It seems a little bit too uh, risky, in my opinion, but it seems to work for him. Uh, I, I think I said, I was told if you save seeds, the better and adjust to local conditions in future years. That's definitely true. I find garlic, so I've saved my garlic for years upon years, and it's got used to my particular growing conditions, and it, I always save the biggest bulb each year in order to... Um, uh plant the, a few months later and it does work it does get bigger and bigger and bigger uh and better and better and it has tailored itself to the growing conditions that i have here uh bally on growing on getting seeds in northern ireland i was confused companies couldn't send them to me but all the gardening magazines came free with seeds that's that's interesting. That's interesting. I wonder if it's because they're not selling the seeds, if the seeds are a gift. Um, I don't know is my honest answer, honest answer. I haven't looked into it too much. I'm just hoping that we can start, or Northern Ireland can start getting seeds again and make it a bit easier because uh, I've got, the, the weird thing I've got in my supporters club and I've, I have to try. I always try and make sure I don't break any laws. So, every, I talk, tick every box, cross the T's, dot the I's, and I've avoided sent, having any in Northern Ireland for that very reason because I don't want to get into a trouble with the law. But yeah, Guernsey, I got somebody in Guernsey who I can send it to. I've just got to fill out a form. Um, doesn't seem quite right to me some for some weird reason. Uh, Stuart Jackson, if you have edible flowers or fennel, I've used paper bags for many years. Just keep an eye on the weather. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. When, the, when you let the seed heads go very, very dry, you don't want them to get wet. You don't want them to rot in the bags. So try and keep them dry um, uh, and, and what have you. In fact, I, I, nasturtiums on that talk about edible flowers i found that nasturtiums have a tendency to pop their seed pods uh, everywhere on my allotment just naturally i don't do that they just happen to do it and they're an edible flower of course very tasty flower and they're quite welcome because i do quite like nasturtiums um so that comes back to what i was saying about carrots and parsnips just leaving them to grow where they already are can work and the nasturtiums is another good one for that Uh, Turbo Stream is also saying, now, there's, the only seeds are not to save are F1 varieties as they don't come true the next year. So that is very, very true. So F1 varieties is when they've got a male plant, for those that don't notice, there's a male plant and a female plant, and the, the, the plant that came from that has taken on certain genetics. But the following seed, the, which would be F2, if you like, may be close to either the male or the female plant so you may not get exactly the same 
but it could also be quite fun to see what does turn up and you may end up with something much better for you know it swings and roundabouts again um, and at the end of the day uh, yeah if you know if you're gonna if you're trying to save seeds of whatever you can f1 varieties you will still get a tomato let's say a tomato because that's a, an example i'm thinking of uh it will still become a uh, rather nice uh, or you'll still get a tomato plant cropping mm. time for another swig so the the tips that i'm getting is basically leave your plants to go or the seed pods to go very very dry store them in a brown paper bag and then what do you do with them do you hang them up in a greenhouse to dry do you hang them up in a shed to dry do you just pot and store them in that brown paper bag until next year um what do you do with them after you've got pop them into this paper bag uh keep them comments coming in i can see andrew norris has joined good evening to you hope you are well um so yeah yeah let's uh let's gonna switch cameras slightly and see if everybody else because there's one camera or there's one of the uh gardening people from wembley that hasn't been spotted yet the two here have been seen and the one over there has been seen there's one more has anybody seen it yet um it's quite blatant on this camera where it is i think but uh, let's see if anybody else has spotted it and uh, it's also visible on this camera because i can see it right here as well obviously i know where it is so i know where that that, that the, the uh the footballer is uh, Stuart Jackson is saying, I hang my seeds in the greenhouse, but with flowers, I will sow most of them within a month. There you go. So, yeah, so he hangs his seeds. That's why I was wanted to find out. You know, you've got this brown paper bag full of the seeds. Um, hang them up in a, a, Stuart says, in a greenhouse, but then he sows them within a month. Now, I can see that working with certain plants and kind of makes sense, actually, if you think a, a plant is going to put its seeds out at a certain time, which is going to be best for it. But um, what about the annuals, uh, lettuce seeds that you can't sow until the following year, for example? Uh, somebody in the Facebook group has got it above the pitchfork. Yeah, right there. There he is, sitting on the rake. He's been hiding there uh, all evening. Uh, Ian Beddoes, maybe Amanda red flagged it and sent it for an early bath. Right. She hated these when they turned up. She absolutely hated them. Uh, she uh, wanted. She doesn't like gnomes. She doesn't want them in her garden. So uh, I had to get them, didn't I? <laughs> Everywhere, anyone knows um i was saying the other day my beard i've shaved my beard off uh but i was growing it bigger and bigger until amanda got annoyed with it and she got annoyed with it so i had to cut it off <laughs> uh, adrian is saying next to the shed sign uh yeah that, that was one i think was spotted earlier there and those two there and above your head to the left yeah two there uh, oh, it's Kevin Hall in the Facebook group. Hello, Kevin. How are you? Yeah, the, yeah. I, I wasn't going to do anything for the football, in all honesty, but uh, I kind of figured, let's bring one over. You know, I kind of figured it's a gardening show. I've got to incorporate. If I'm going to do anything to do with the football, I've got to incorporate it somehow. So there we go. England football gnomes. Uh, Stuart Jackson, only sown flower seeds from saved seed. I may try veg this year just to see what happens. Yes, I keep I keep saying I'm going to do more seed saving, but then I end up with, I've got a, boxes and boxes in my office of seeds that I'm trying to sow. Um, that just seems to continue growing and growing, and then 
And I just kind of think if I save seed, I'm going to be adding to those. And I hate waste. I absolutely hate waste. So I have to sow all my seeds. Uh, should we go have a look at the second part of Amanda's allotment tour quickly and uh, keep your thoughts going on this seed saving tips? I've got lettuce and spinach. Um, you can see I've let it grow to um, grow to seed. I've had so many leaves off them as of my neighbours, but I'm trying to save seeds and I'll tell you why in a second. Um, I've got carrots, parsnips, which have been a little bit unsuccessful this year. I'm on my fourth sow, but I've got some great tips in the live on Sunday. So I'm hoping fifth time, fourth time lucky. Um, I've got some more peas. You can see just there and actually over the far end of the flower bed because mine all got savaged by a pigeon. So I'm trying again, but just planting some random sort of tomatoes and cucumbers just in the meantime. Um, I'm a big fan of flowers, so I've just crammed some flowers in like gladioli, snapdragon, hollyhocks, geraniums. I think there's a couple of zinnias in there as well. And um, my brassicas, um, I've got some broccoli and cauliflower in there and just on the other side, some garlic. Um, this is the most important part of my plot. I think this is my seating area where I sit and have a beer or an ice cream or maybe two if I'm here all day um, and I like it here because it actually overlooks my um, flower bed so I'm hoping that in a month or so this is just going to be completely covered in colour but it's getting there. Um, I've got raspberries dotted around, um, nice to have some this year, I've just got to try and beat the birds to them and I seem to be losing most of the time at the moment. Um, and here ooh, you can see actually my Atlantic giant pumpkin. Hopefully that's going to be ginormous soon. Um, here we've got Brussels. Um, Brussels, this is actually the thing that I'm most excited for. Um, probably, probably joint most excited my cucumbers. Because um, I'm growing these because my granddad, he was sort of really well known for his veg. He had a beautiful garden with a huge veg patch. And he used to just randomly, you'd, you'd come home and you'd find like a bag of vegetables um, hanging on your door handle. But he was particularly well known for a stick of Brussels at Christmas. So he's sadly not with us anymore. So I'm trying to continue that tradition for the family um onions a few weeds in there and my runner beans um here i've got my potatoes um you can see actually on our plot we're lucky enough to get random poppies and i just try and let them grow where they can and here i've got some courgettes butternut squash um a uh, willow tree, which I'm really excited, obviously, for when this gets ginormous and just covers the whole plot in shade. And a little rose bush I was gifted here, which actually looks a little bit sad. So I'll see what's wrong with that. Um, so that is my current plot. Um, and I was actually so lucky on the weekend that I've now been given a second bit of plot. Um, so I'm going to be going from having a half to one and a half. Um, I've done a little bit of work on it. I have to be really careful here actually because this is a bit where I always trip over. I'm so clumsy. So if I'm not tripping over here, I'm tripping over here. So we'll see if I can make it through. Um, this is the only bit that I've done any work on today. I'm going to just sprinkle and um, get rid of the sort of plastic underneath the weed membrane and I'm going to put some wildflowers down. Um, the previous tenant left some tyres. I know we can't grow sort of things that we're going to eat in there, but I thought it would make some sort of quite cheap um, planters. Um, what was so nice as I arrived the other day and one of my plot neighbours, Brian, who's just there, uh, he'd actually started to build me a frame um, for growing flowers in, similar to this that you can see we've done here. I'm, I'm so lucky on my plot. Everyone is just so kind. Um so the new plot sort of comes all the way up the hill. Um, I'm going to give a quarter of it to one of my other plot neighbours who is running out of room and wants to grow a lot more brassicas. And it takes me all the way up to here. So I've definitely got my work cut out, but I'm, yeah, excited for the challenge and I'll keep you updated. And thanks for watching.
Well, bye, Amanda. Thank you very much. That what a pretty little video, isn't it? And lovely to see other people's allotments on this on this uh, video or this live stream. So, uh, anybody else wants to shed shed a, shed send a video like that in? Please do. Please do. It was great last week. We had three videos, all different. Um, you know, and I can split them up into two bits if I feel they're too long to try and spread them out. But please do send them to me. It's Make your video and head to wetransfer.com. There you can send them to me at richard at the vegrowerpodcast.co.uk. I have to make a little video or a stinger up to explain how to do that. But yeah, fantastic, fantastic looking plot. She certainly looks like she's got her work cut out with her new uh new plot that she's taken on. But at the same time, the allotment other allotment holders there seem very friendly and very helpful. So fantastic. So we are talking about seed saving tips and uh, please do get them in. Now, Stuart Jackson is any ideas which seeds would work best? Thanks, team. Yes, I in my opinion, we'll ask everybody else out there what they think. But in my opinion, though, I think um, the best ones are probably going to be the beans, the runner beans, the broad beans, the French beans, the peas as well, for that matter, because you just let them leave them on the plant obviously you want to harvest some of them but if you have one plant going spare you just leave them till the the pods go dry they won't produce any more peas after that but they're probably easiest because you just leave them to go dry then you've got your seeds ready to go the other one i was thinking that would be a good one to save would be pumpkins now obviously pumpkins we don't want to leave those to go really ripe you would have to harvest your pumpkins as normal, but then you scoop the seeds out, give them a good wash, and then dry them in the windowsill with some kitchen towel. I think they're also going to be a good one to use. Although you can actually eat pumpkin seeds. I don't find them that tasty. Uh, Idaho Garden Girls joined. Hello. Hope you are well. Uh, oh, Bally Stillian, good question. Richard, just thought, how is your Christmas dinner bed coming along? Really well, actually. Uh, I've got to do a follow up. I've, I, I've got a, I've, I've got a bit of a problem when it comes to making the videos. Love making videos, you know, the, the normal sort of not these live stream videos, the normal videos. But for me, it's because I'm so manic at work at the moment. Finding the time to make up the videos is distracting me from other jobs that I need to be doing. But also the editing. So I'm, I'm sort of put the videos to one one side at the moment um i'm trying to change jobs but that's a whole other other thing uh, but the christmas dinner bed well like the potatoes potatoes have really got big they've flowered they're doing really well but they've gone they were growing up and then they've just the wind and the rain have caused them to go like that and they're sort of blocking out everything so i'm going to put in some uh frame to hold the potatoes to keep them going upright but they are good sort of three four foot tall peas doing well leeks carrots parsnips i had to had to thin out the carrots and parsnips all doing really well we've got cabbage in there we've got brussels sprouts in there everything basically is just doing really well in that bed but i think the potatoes putting the potatoes in there was a bit of a mistake it's a bit too small to grow potatoes and i think what i would do if i was to do this again and i probably will do it again is to grow potatoes in buckets that I can move in and out of that bed should I need to, um, purely because, as you know, potatoes are large plants. But on the whole, it is working very, very well. Uh, Ian Benos is saying that Amanda's tyres from that little video look better than the ones in her car, in his car, sorry. Uh, and Oracle has gone on to say, what a lovely woman. Amanda is absolutely a lovely woman. Um, I'm not that high tech yet, Richard, or I would send in. So it's all right. Don't feel you have to send in a video. It's just great to see different videos, different people and things like that. And don't feel you have to do an allotment tour either. It could be a video of you showing how to do something, a project or something. Anything, it, anything goes as long as it's garden related. Uh, Stuart Jackson, a great pair of videos. It's great to you see other people's gardens. I must video mine and schools as it may last a couple of minutes. Yeah, please do. It doesn't matter if it lasts a couple of minutes. That one 
Murder's one was eight minutes, and I just cut it at about the four-minute mark so I could filter it out throughout the show. Um, so please do. Please do do that. Uh, Ian Bellows is off to Malaga tomorrow, you lucky sod, and back Wednesday, funeral funeral to attend. Very, very sorry. I'll take back what I said about you being a, a lucky sod. That I feel really bad for saying that. Sorry, mate. Sorry. Um uh, Stuart Jackson, we've got our Christmas dinner bed. How long can I leave the potatoes in? The plan was to sell all the veg together. Thanks again. So I, I, I don't know what variety of potatoes you're using, Stuart, but I'm guessing it's going to be the uh, a main crop variety. So for me personally, I can leave my potatoes in the bed right up till Christmas Day. and You might get a bit of slug damage, but on a whole, they seem to do okay. But I've got a very mild climate. The potatoes are a good one because if you harvest them and store them right, you can actually store them for nine months. So what I would do is what I would do in your case, Stuart, is wait until the foliage goes basically dies down, there's nothing left, then cut it down, leave it for a week then dig all the potatoes up wash off some of the mud and then place them in a, a greenhouse or somewhere that they can keep dry but get sunlight to dry out the outside of the skins so that the skins become hard like you would expect with your main crop potatoes then if you store them somewhere cool dry and dark they should last for quite a long time um, farmers, and I think Adrian will probably be able to back me up on this, farmers tend to keep them in a big old barn, and when they go in there, they have a red light, which just helps with the storage of potatoes. So, yeah, there's. I would expect potatoes to be ready about October time, your main crops. So there's plenty of time before then. Um, and then storm summer cool, dry and dark. Or... You could do what I do and leave them in the ground. Just uh, the ground. The risk is, of course, the ground could become frozen, which makes them harder to dig out. Um, or slug damage is another problem. Or they might rot in the soil if it's particularly wet. I don't find that a problem. I'm on a clay soil, so that's quite surprising. It's not a problem. Uh, what else? What else? Or you can make a clamp. If you haven't got anywhere cool, dry and dark to store them, a clamp, which is what the old farmers used to do where they would basically put the uh, potatoes or any of their root crops and they would put a layer of uh, straw on the ground put their crops on top of that put another layer of straw put their crops on top of that um, and keep going on until you had this mound and I think they would also cover that mound with some soil as well in order to preserve them and keep them going throughout the winter months this was in the time obviously before refrigeration and everything but a lot of people do just um, just uh, a, a lot of people do still do the clamp method because it's simple and it doesn't need refrigeration. Uh, oh, sorry, Adrian, I don't grow potatoes, just sheep. I, I wasn't sure if you had a bit of an insight. So sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, Andrew. Yes, people in the village store them in a cool, dark room under the house. They can happily sit there for months. Well, that was the other thing that was going through my head as well, an old um, root cellar. Uh, we don't really have them in the UK anymore. Houses don't really have cellars in the UK uh, anymore for a long time. Um, one idea that I've read about, if you were really wanted to do this would be to bury an old chest freezer make sure there's no refrigerant in the chest freezer though but bury that in the ground but obviously so you can access it and that would act as a root cellar that's an idea that i've looked into but it's again it's not something that i've done myself or want to do but i i've got a garage i tend to store my potatoes in i'll pop them in a cardboard box inside the garage they stay dry, they stay cool, uh, and I put them up somewhere high so rats and mice can't get them. And therefore, we won't end up with rats and mice in our house. So, yeah, that, that's potatoes. 
um, and how to store them and what have you. Uh, what, what's, what's the time? So coming back to what we were discussing, let's get rid of this comment. We've been discussing this seed saving technique, and I've I've suddenly realised that we basically focused on some of the, the flowering seeds more than anything. And there's certain seeds from, say, tomatoes or um, courgettes that are not so easy to do. Tomatoes are a particularly difficult one to save seeds from because what you have to do is remove the gel, gel from the uh, around the tomato seeds. So if you scoop out all the seeds from the tomatoes, you've got this sticky gel as well as the seeds. And what you have to do is pop that into a jar with water and the seeds, the gel that will ferment and remove those the gel from the seeds. I, I can't remember how long you have to do it for, about a week if I remember right. Then you pour that water away and then dry out the seeds and there you go, you've stored some tomato seeds. Courgettes are fairly easy to store the seeds, but you do have to let the courgettes go overripe before you do it. Otherwise, when we normally harvest courgettes, we want them when they're quite young and the seeds are pretty small, and pretty undeveloped. We want to leave those till they go really ripe before you start getting the, the courgette seeds out of them. Uh, what else? What else? What other... Chilies and peppers are really easy, actually. They're best when they do go fully ripe, so that's usually red in colour. Then uh, I would cut open the chilli, cut open the pepper, scoop out the seeds, which we normally do when we're cooking anyway, um, pop those seeds into a brown paper bag and just dry them, hang them up in the windowsill to dry. Uh, nice and easy way. Very easy to store chilli and pepper seeds, actually, and... What I also like about that is there's very little waste because you're still able to eat the chilli and the peppers from it as well. Um, Adrian is saying, my father used to start dahlias in the garage and they never survived. Yeah, um, dahlias, dahlias, dahlias are uh, an interesting one, actually. Dahlias are, the roots of dahlias are edible. They were originally imported uh, to be an edible crop, and then the flowers became more more preferred. Um, taste, they're an interesting taste, dahlias. I can't really describe them. Um, but I think with dahlias, they are very frost uh, very delicate to the frost they do come from uh e e from near the equator so you probably have to wrap the dahlias in newspaper and pot them in a box with plenty of newspaper for insulation to try and maintain a good temperature in order to store dahlias um and students say dahlias have to be kept dry and frost free so yeah probably in a, a greenhouse it might just get down to that frosting temperature, but plenty of um, plenty of newspaper around it should store them. What I actually did with my dahlias this year or over this winter was I, I kept them in a pot and then I popped that pot into the greenhouse and they seem to have done fine. Uh, Andrew Norris, you can always wipe their gel around the tomatoes under running water in a sieve. Yeah, I've not... I've not actually tried that way myself. I've just read that the gel the gel acts around the tomato seeds as a bit of a, a protective layer for some reason. Um, and it inhibits, if I remember right, it inhibits the germination, which is why you never really see tomatoes germinate inside a tomato. If anybody's ever opened a pumpkin or, yeah, pumpkin or um, melons, sometimes you get the seed germinate inside the pumpkin or melon. Uh, the tomato gel stops that from happening. So you've got to get rid of that gel. Uh, the way I've always, when I've done that in the past, is just to leave it in some water to ferment, and that gets rid of a gel. But uh, running it under a, some running water will probably work just as well. Uh, I'm Turbo Stream is back. The phone rang. What did I miss? I don't know when you disappeared, but... Um, we're talking about other things that we can save seeds from. 
uh, Adrian saying his his grand was it his dad used to store dahlias in the garage. He used to pot them in boxes of dry peat. I I wonder if the peat, although it might have been dry, was a bit too moist. Uh, peat has a tendency to hold on to moisture, which is why it's used a lot in the uh, compost, as we know. So I'm wondering if it just held on to the moisture and it rotted away the dahlias. So I think, yeah, newspaper is probably the method that I hear the most of. So carrying on with seed saving, I'm trying to think what else we might want to save seeds from. So we've covered carrots, we've covered parsnips, either let them flower and save the seed in a bag or leave them to flower and spread their seed naturally. Uh, beans, leave them to dry, and same as peas, leave them to dry and then harvest those beans and peas and store them. You could also do that if you're dry, growing uh, something like cannellini beans or butter beans that you want to dry out to store in the cupboard as dried beans. Um, you could do the same thing for that and then have some for food and have some for growing next year. Peas as well, actually, if you're growing... Uh, I'd, I do mushy peas. I haven't done them this year, actually. Mushy peas, and I leave, leave those to go dry, and then I'll harvest those. And I could use the same peas, the dried peas, for growing and for making mushy peas. Um, uh, pumpkins, scoop out the seeds and then use those. Tomatoes, give it a gel and store up those. Uh, what else was there? Um, I can't remember, but uh, Stuart Jackson is asking, can you save potatoes for seeds or will it not work? Yes, you can do that. And I have actually done it again. It's not, I've got to say with potatoes, I found it's not as, as reliable. It's very difficult to get the seed storing or the, the storage of the potatoes just right. But that being said, how often, if you've grown potatoes in a particular bed, how often do they come back the following year where you've left volunteers in the in the, um, in the ground? Or even if you've grown them in pots and the compost that you've taken out and potatoes have a tendency to grow. So it certainly is possible. Uh, you might want to just save the small or the largest potatoes, depending on what you want to do for growing the following year. Um or you could actually cut potatoes into into thirds when it comes to planting them, and that way you get three plants from one potato. That's a whole other thing. Um, I have red red onions from set. I have the red onions from set flowering. Is it worth saving that seed? It might be. It might be worth saving that seed. Actually, it depends on the variety. As long as it's not an F one variety, which I doubt would be in seed or being set, it will be. But yes, uh, that's a, another very good one. I actually quite like the look of onions and garlic flowers. Anyway, alliums as they are, are known. I think leave those again. Leave those flowers to go nice and dry, and then paper bag over them save the seeds shake them and you want to try and keep those little black seeds so you can sow them the following year uh i had one more that i was thinking about oh garlic garlic what i do with my garlic and i do save that every year uh and particularly the elephant garlic now when i first brought my elephant garlic i started off with one clove planted that and that grew into one garlic uh, elephant garlic bulb i saved excuse me i saved two cloves from that one one bulb and planted those uh, the following year and that obviously left me with with two elephant garlic i took the largest bulb and replanted all the cloves from that and each year now i get enough that i can grow elephant garlic every year from that so yeah basically you just replant that Break the cloves apart. And the same with normal garlic. Break the cloves apart. Get rid of all the papery stuff around the edge and replant those when it comes to that. Um, and Turbo Stream is saying he's going to give it a go with the red onions. He's got nothing to lose. Absolutely. There is nothing to lose. Um, I have got somewhere. 
a few photos. Do you want to have a look at all the photos that have came in uh, this week? Let's have a look and see what we've got. Uh, I touched, or last week we went into this in quite some detail, but this came in from Stuart Jackson, and he's uh, shared his photo of five of the packs of seeds from the Seed Supporters Club, and he's been busy sowing those. Uh, this is also his peas that he's been growing, which look absolutely delicious. And I would say get harvesting those peas very, very quickly because uh, they very quickly can go dry and become seeds, which fits in with what we talked about this evening. Um, uh, what, what's this? Ah, courgettes. We, we've touched upon courgettes this evening. And this is a collection that he has shown us. As you can see, that's a nice looking courgette growing there. Um, followed on with this round courgette. Also looks delicious. Um, uh, next, we hit on this earlier. He Stuart has been planting leeks out in an old polystyrene fish box as a way of trying to make use of space, something I did last year. And I normally start my leek seeds off in these very same boxes as well. Great use of space and uh, great use of recycling. Now, Durka in Canada shared these photos of damage to her netting. She was out getting some new chickens at the time. And as you can see from these photos, something attacked their netting. And they believe it to be a crow that has done the damage. I mean, look at that hole. That's quite a significant piece of damage. And finally, as always, Ian Beddoes has to share his normal joke, which is very, very well received, of course. And a uh, I think that leaves these photos off with a good ending. At which point does it stop being good for the garden when it constantly rains? I think that's something that we are always asking ourselves at the moment. This rain seems to be non-stop, although I believe we're getting into some dry weather coming up soon. Uh, I think even a heat wave is coming. However, I would like to point out, you may remember a few months ago, I said and I predicted we were going to have a very wet summer. So far, I've been right. I don't want to take a, take any glory for that, but I was right. Let's have a quick look in the comments and see what's going on there. So I believe this is Rebecca in the Facebook group who loved my seeds that arrived this week, who very kindly signed up for our Seed Supporters Club and uh, sent out the seeds to her as well. Very, very grateful for all the help I received with the Seed Supporters Club. Stuart Jackson, we are saving broad beans at school, so I hope it works and it will save us cash. P.S. The peas are no longer, they were great tasting. There you go. I did say during that you want to get those peas harvested, and he's done it, and they were great tasting. I thought they would be. Something about fresh peas. Peas is one of those... One of those crops I think we grow at home um, in order to, well, just taste better than anything we can buy at a supermarket. Even the, the ones that are frozen within the hour, homegrown peas just taste so much better. And apart from anything, you harvest them within minutes. They're in a pan. Turbo stream. I save a few flower seeds, including aquiligua and calendula, aquiligua. I can't get my word out there today. And calendula too. Yeah, calendula is a, a very easy one. Uh, again, I have done that in the past, but I've I find I get so many seeds these days that I I end up with too many, and I don't like to waste them. Um, so, but aquilegia. Aquil aquil Beautiful plant, beautiful plant, and well worth, if you can save the seeds from, then do it. That being said, my wildflower meadow, of course, the seeds in that area will be effectively saved from themselves because that's what we're hoping to do, let them chop down and grow in that same area uh, year upon year upon year. Stuart Jackson is saying I should change my name to Michael Fish, possibly, but Michael Fish gets it wrong. I just took a... 
well, I had a feeling it was going to be a, a wet summer, and I was right. Uh, yes, good evening. Already got the turnips in. I was right. It was Rebecca. Lovely to see you. Um, yeah, turnips. I haven't sown the turnips yet. That's uh, going to be next weekend. I've sown today the perillia, um, which will be out. That podcast will be out a little bit later on for the Supporters Club, uh, where I'll talk about what I know about Perillia. A bit of an interesting one, Perillia. I don't know if anybody's ever grown it before or heard about it. Um, it was popular for, as an architectural plant with the Victorians, but tastes a bit like aniseed or something. But uh, interesting interesting to see how it goes. Where it was the chicory. Chicory was a bit of a wild bull like the Perillia in some ways, because not everybody likes chicory. Very bitter tasting. I sowed that the other day. Uh, bitter tasting, but I like bitter food, really do. So I'm looking forward to the chicory. Uh, Ernie has joined. Hello, I saw a video of your area. What a beautiful place you live in, Ernie. Update on the ground, Elder. Next spring, we're going to hire a digger to get rid of them onto a on a large corner of our garden. They're spreading faster than we can kill them. Yeah, I mean, ground elder cooch grass is a really, really bad, bad weed. And it's you've got to be persistent. Digging it out might be the only way. And I, when I saw the video you shared last week, I realised just how bad that ground elder is. Uh, applying a good weed killer onto leaves throughout the garden, focusing on each section of the garden. Not popular, I know, but we can't think any other way we have a large garden i mean i'm not a lover of weed killer at all i don't use the stuff but i do believe there is a place for weed killer um and by the sounds of it you're not having much luck with it anyway and it does have a tendency to kill out or ground out or smother everything else that you have in your garden um it's not nice it's not nice ground elder Turbo Stream is saying, my wildflower seeds don't come up as planned. The south side poppies and calendula made up for it. Well, I think it can take about three years for your wildflowers to really establish. Um, I, I've sown the seeds this year. I've popped, basically, I've popped netting over them in order to stop my chickens from eating the seeds. And they seem to have germinated and seem to be growing away quite well. There's a I've got to do a little bit of work and remove some of the brambles that grow there. But I, mean, I can excuse me, I can see this stuff growing underneath. They're very, very slow growing. So I'm still keeping the the um the netting over them for the time being to stop the chickens from going in there. Um, although that I might look at making it bigger or something in the not too distant future. That's something to think about for next weekend, perhaps. And uh, hi, Ernie. I enjoyed the video, of Richard Vobes. Yeah, that was a great video. If anybody doesn't know, check out Richard Vobes, the Board Explorer on YouTube, and he visited Ernie. And um, Ernie shared a video with us last week of the Ground Elder. Please do go check out that video. Uh, Stuart Jackson said, wildflower seeds can take two to three years to give a great show. That's what I understood as well, two to three years before they really start showing themselves. Um, but certainly I, the ones that have germinated here in terms of our wildflower, if I took the netting off, the chickens will demolish it in seconds, which is why I'm leaving it, leaving the netting over there to protect them. Now, I've just... Uh, realize there's one particular type of plant that we have or vegetable or grow your own crop that we probably should talk about saving seeds from and that is lettuce i don't know if anybody out there grows as much lettuce or salad leaves as we do we grow a lot of it in my household partly because my wife is always eating it and they're expensive to buy from a shop and it grows in my veggie pod which does a fantastic job of growing lettuce leaves but with lettuce again you want to leave it you want to leave a plant or two that you don't harvest anything from and leave it to flower and it'll just 
what will happen is uh, lettuce will start building up like a stack of leaves, a spine going up. And then on the top of that, it will grow a flower, which again, you leave that till it goes dry and then harvest the seeds from that. Obviously, the key thing with all this is make sure they are pollinated. Uh, insects in general will do that for you, but you might have to go around with a paintbrush to make sure they are pollinated. That's a very hard one to tell if they're going to become seed and if a seed is going to be viable until you grow them or plant them the following year. Uh, Ernie, thank you. Those really made me feel relaxed. I was so nervous. The viewers were so kind. I was stumbled by you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was a good video. Very good video. Idaho Garden Girl, I save lettuce seed. It looks like a weed when it goes to seed. It does. Yeah, I agree. It looks horrible, I feel, as a lettuce goes to seed. It does look really, really messy. Uh, but if you're trying to grow it to save your own seed, this is what you've got to do. You know, I'm trying to, I'm thinking of the, the incident we've had in Northern Ireland this year where it's been very difficult to get seed and saving your own seed might be a way of mitigating that circumstance happening in the future. Again, not something we probably want to think about, but it could happen. If anything, over the last 18 months, I think it shows, um, it shows that the worst things what well, nobody saw COVID coming is what I'm trying to say. And it came out of the blue. It go, just goes to show how delicate we really are. Um, yeah, Idaho is saying, uh, yeah, horrible. Rat it. It, lettuce when it bolts does. It's horrible. I like it when it looks. I think it's quite an architectural plant when it's growing as lettuce, but it bolts. It just looks, yeah. Um but like I say, that's something we've got to get over if you want to do this properly. Ibero, sorry, I missed a couple of minutes. I spotted a snail on my peas in the greenhouse, then found two more babies, so all evicted. Now, that's interesting you mentioned slugs and snails, or snails, I should say, Ian, because uh, I had a, a message from somebody this week, actually, who has been using Slug Be Gone, the what do you call it, wool pellets as slug deterrents. And he's found that it didn't do any diff any work, it didn't stop any slugs and snails on some of his plants. In fact, he found that they seem to attract the slugs and snails. Now, that's not been my experience using Slug Be Gone, but there's something I found quite interesting. Um, I'm going to be talking to a nematode manufacturer for the audio podcast at some point. Uh, so once we're safe to do that. So uh, we're going to find more about nematodes as a possible thing that we could use instead. Uh, Turbo stream. I always struggle to grow lettuce and radish. What, what, what do you find the problem with both of those? Do they bolt too quickly or do they just um, not germinate? And Helen... Depp it also has the same problem with radishes either. So embarrassing. What's the problem? What is the problem? What 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 result do you get when you try to grow these? Are they too? I don't. Uh, uh, while while you come back with your comments, I'm going to sneeze in a second. <coughs> Excuse me. Is that going to be the only one? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so, where was I saying? Um, Ian Bellows is saying he planted radish again this year, have four so far. So, what I find with radish is that you've got to, because they're so quick at growing, you've got to be on them and um, thin them pretty quickly so that they have enough room to swell up and grow. Uh, what I find if you don't don't stay on it enough they grow into these sort of spindly little things because they haven't got the room to expand and then that encourages them to bolt very quickly uh the same uh so yeah that's what i thought radishes have leaves but no radishes so look at how how you're thinning them and if you're just getting if you're just getting on like this long spindly thing 
are they going to bulk before they have a chance to swell? If that's the case, it may be that they need a bit more watering, assuming they've had enough room to, to thin them out. And another thing I found with radishes, actually, they do not like hard clay soil. So what I tend to do is um, I grow my radishes in a... I've grown them in the ground, but I've added lots of really fine compost that the radish doesn't have a problem with pushing out the way. Um, but uh, multi-purpose compost works really well, especially if it's finely sieved. Um, so it's, it's possibly one of those two things. Uh, not enough water when they're trying to swell or the soil's too hard that it's not able to push itself apart uh, easily. Idaho Garden Girl, if I try to sow anything directly in the garden, the sow bugs, earwigs and birds will eat them. I had to start everything except carrots and parsnips inside. I'm exactly the same, funny enough. I, I start everything off in here on my shelves. Um, peas, broad beans, everything except carrots, parsnips, radishes. I directly sow my lettuce or my cat and come again salads. They will they will be sown in my veggie pod. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's what I find. Same reason: birds, mice, anything will eat those uh, seeds, and I don't want them. I want the plants themselves. Uh, the lettuce hardly grows at all, and the radishes bolt to seed very easily. I do tend to forget about them too. There you go. That's your problem. Is that? straight away with turbo stream there if you tend to forget about them i don't grow those sort of things down on the allotment i they grow at home so i don't tend to forget about them uh i tend to grow them in my veggie pod or in pots and the great thing with a veggie pod what i tend to do is i'll turn the tap on in the morning when i go out only for a couple of minutes and it'll spray water away with the veggie pod it will take about two three minutes while i'm opening the chickens up then I turn the tap off, and that tends to keep the soil moist, which I find lettuce really needs in order to produce well. Um, now, for see, if you haven't got a veggie pod, then all you've got to remember is just water it daily, and it's probably the same with radishes as well. Water them daily, so little and often. Uh, things like radishes. Radishes are ready in about six weeks, lettuce six to eight weeks. So they're quick crops, which means they're also quick to bolt. And then once they're ready, harvest them and eat them straight away. Uh, that, that's my tip is water them regularly. but They tend to, I think, struggle in the heat. Idaho slugs will eat the tiny germinated plants, yep. Yep. Again, that's why I start everything off on the inside where I can control it a lot better. Uh, my radish don't bolt, but I do have horrible clay. We'll try containers. Yeah. Get some containers of really finely sieved multi-purpose compost. You know, the type that you can really sort of, if you stick your finger into it, it'll move out the way quite easily you know a bit of resistance but not anything that's gonna really struggle with it i find that on clay soil radish just the same as parsnips tend to do it okay in clay soil but carrots also they don't have the room and this is the only way when they're trying to swell if they're up against something hard it, it's like you're trying to push your push yourself out when you're in a crowded room uh, terms from, I should prepare a salad area really and pay a bit more attention if I grow them at home then the slugs get there if I grow at home the slugs get there first grow them grow them in a pot something like that put some copper around the edge just get them up high um, other thing you can do is keep it somewhere cool so it doesn't get the heat of the day and that should be enough to keep the slugs and snails off um it's, it's worth doing. I, I'd say I grow mine at home. Uh, I'm going to prepare a seedbed so we will devote a bit of space to salads. There you go. Yeah, that's what we want, a seedbed. Ideal. Uh, Digwell Green Fingers. Hello. 
how are you? Uh, he's gone on to say Leventon F25 compost is probably the best stuff for it. I assume that's what he's saying, but Leventon F25 compost, uh, which is a uh, I'm trying to think, I do I did have some Leventon somewhere. It's it's that nice compost, like I say, it um it does it doesn't compact and squish everything up. It, it, it and I feel when radishes try to swell, if it's, it's easier for them to swell, they're going to swell a lot easier. Uh, Helen Depp is saying, thanks for the advice. You are more than welcome. And Digwell saying, I use Grazer's G2 for slugs. Work Works perfect. Uh, F2FS. Yeah. Excuse me, excuse me. I've not heard of grazers myself, so. But I'm. There's a lot to think about. A lot to think about. Uh, Ian Meadows is saying, "Got to invest in a veggie pod. Think I can find room on the patio for the mid-sized one. You will not regret it. You will not regret it. I think they are absolutely fantastic pieces of kits." So we've got just under three minutes to go before I close up. I'm sure a lot of you want to get off to watch the football this evening. Um, you know, I'm not a football fan. Like I said, I'm not a football fan. I'm not interested. I'm not going to watch tonight because I've not watched any of their games and they've won. If I watch and they lose, I'm going to blame myself. And uh, I think it's great to see everybody feeling excited and pleased about something. So good luck, England. Good luck, everyone, uh, and I hope it goes our way. Um, Stuart Jackson said, has anyone noticed that compost has gone up in price? Dobby's free peat free for £20. Um, I've not noticed it myself. Seems the same price around here, but I know peat free is or peat-based compost is being banned, so that might be why it's gone up in price. Uh, grazers makes the leaves taste bad for the slugs, so they give up. Oh, is that a bit like a garlic spray that makes the slugs and snails not want to eat it because it, it tastes bad? There we go. Uh, it's coming home. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so no fitty for me, but I hope they win. That's exactly how I feel. I'm, I think it's great to see everyone excited and feeling like they can get behind it again. Uh, did you notice that ITV showed the Italian job tonight? <laughs> no, I haven't watched. I haven't watched TV, but that does make me laugh. That does make me laugh. Um, yeah, that's one of the reasons that we're going to get rid of our TV because I don't watch it anymore. Right, well, guys, let's start wrapping up. So it's been great chatting to you all again this evening. I think we've we've talked about seed saving a lot. What to do with marrows. We've helped with the radish and lettuce problems that people are having. I think we've we've covered quite a bit again tonight. It's been fantastic and great to get everyone, as always, advice and sharing your tips around. Let's keep this going. It's going to be fantastic going on doing this for other years. Uh, thank you, Oracle, for the phone call. It's lovely to hear you again. And Amanda, thank you so much for the video. Lovely to see your plot. Um, if you want to uh, email me, richard at adventuregroundpodcast.co.uk, post your photos in the Facebook group. Uh, we'll use those to create discussion topics. Um, if you want to send me a video, say wetransfer.com, create a video, send it to wetransfer or go to wetransfer.com. It will upload it to the my email is richard at the veg grower podcast and then i'll get an email and i'll download it it's the easiest way to send videos due to file sizes um on the podcast on monday evening we're going to be talking about preserving so uh what we might want to do with our our crops once we've harvested them how to make them last we've touched on that with potatoes jams chutneys freezers that sort of thing lots and lots to to discuss on the podcast we'll be back again next sunday and uh, before we sign off let's have a quick rundown of the comments uh here better saying he's got six tvs there well done for you thanks again richard for a great live show thank you for taking part Stuart. um what's on the menu from there oh that does remind me next week yes 
I've got the idea. Next week, what I want to do is um, I want to know what songs you listen to while you're gardening because we're going to create a gardening playlist on Spotify and Amazon Music for everyone to listen to. So get your thinking caps on, and next week we'll start making this list up on the show. Thank you for reminding me that. Um, once again, how to send videos. I don't know, right. Go to wetransfer.com. I'll have to make a video up to do that. Uh, go to wetransfer.com. Enter your email address and my email address, which is Richard at the Venture Ground Podcast, and upload your video to there. I'll get an email. Or they might ask you to send me the link, and I'll click on that and come and get the email. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything, and it's the easiest way to do it. Uh, Helen Depp is saying, thank you for not talking about the football. You are welcome. I don't have a clue about football, so I'm not going to talk about it. Uh, Turbo Street, see you all next week. Thanks, Richard. Thank you for joining us. Beatrice, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Hargrave Gas, thank you, everyone. Happy growing. Indeed, happy growing. Cheers, everyone, and so on. Um, so on and so on. Get your ideas for next week coming, or get your thinking caps on for next week. So until then, uh, where's the closing? Where's the closing one? Where's it, where's it gone? There we go. Until then, please take care.